thank you for inviting me. It's a, a great pleasure to be here today. And boy, I'm going to give an insight on the, the difficult process of reckoning with colonial legacy um, that the Pigorini Museum has, um, is going through. In, in particular, as uh, Chiara told, I'll be focusing on the Museo Coloniale di Roma, the Colonial Museum of Rome, whose collection were acquired by our institution in um, 2011, and have been conserved in our storage um, since then. In uh, July uh, 2000 um, of this year, in July, the collection of the Colonial Museum started to be investigated at the, as a whole for the first time, with the, with the aim of reopening the museum in 2020. Uh, in this process, several issues um, emerged, which I'd like to address here. So first of, the, of all, um, let's have a look at the history of the Colonial uh, Museum. Um, uh, this museum was founded in uh, Rome in 1914, and during the first stage of the colonial uh, of the Italian colonialism, as the, the result of uh, the acquisition and transfer to Rome of the colonial exhibition at in, in Genoa in the same years, uh, the object. Um, that were present in Genoa exhibition remain hidden in crates at the Palazzo um, delle Esposizioni, waiting for a place to be displayed and showed. In 1923, Benito Mussolini finally inaugurated the Colonial Museum at Palazzo della Consulta. Then the museum remained there for about 12 years. In 1935, it, is moved from, um, it was moved from uh, Palazzo della Consulta to a larger building in Via Aldovrandi in Rome, near the zoological garden of the city. After a while, the museum closed again in order to inventory the collection, at, at the, and it reopened only in uh, 1947, after the end of the World War II, the same year in which the Italy which Italy signed the peace treaty, renouncing all claims to its former colonies, except for the Somalia. After the war, the museum remained there in Via Dovrandi for about 23 years, and it was closed definitely in 1971. After its closure, um, the objects were stored, first in Via Dovrandi, then in the Museum of Oriental Arts in Rome, and then in the storage of the Pigorini Museum. So since its foundation, the Colonial Museum has been periodically opened and closed and has changed name and location several times. It also increased and reduced its collection over the time and has been run um, by different institutions. The reason uh, I've bored you with all this vicissitude is that uh, it is um, there is a strict relationship between the changes effective, uh, affecting the colonial museum and the history of the Italian colonialism. Following the ups and downs of history, the colonial museum has acquired what uh, Francesca Gandolfo defined its nomadic and precarious nature. So through the lenses of the colonial museum, we can reconstruct the history of Italian colonialism for the first exploration to the Horn of Africa in the second part of the 19th century to the post-colonial period. Furthermore, the museum can become a vehicle to talk about some critics' points in contemporary elaboration of the colonial legacy, underline the tension between memory and oblivion, retrieval and nostalgia, uh, critical and the revisionist approaches. Mm, getting back to the reason why the museum uh, was founded, it is important to remember that colonial museum uh, collection was, were gathered with a specific aim to represent to the public the social and economic con uh, condition of four colonies, with particular regard to the work of civilization carried out in the colonies by the Italian states. That's what are by the uh, geographer and explorer Carlo Rossetti who was the um, organizer of the exposition in, in Genoa and the transfer of its collection in Rome. So we can say that mm, the museum was born as a propaganda tool to educate and raise interest on colonial feats, and it was part of many of, of, 
of the colonies and instrument of military and political apparatus. No scientific interest was at the core of the museological perspectives. Objects were organized and presented on a geographical basis in, in illustrating the history of the conquered territories. But each room, in each room, military objects were trophies, stuffed animals, and ethnographic objects were placed side by side. It seems that ethnographical objects were put there just an exotic back back backdrop for the celebration of the Italian explorer and soldier. The propaganda nature of the colonial museum kept growing in the following years, especially after the conquest of Ethiopia and the following proclamation of the empire of Italian East Africa in 1936. New rooms were opened, were opened to present objects from um, Ethiopia and Somalia, and many activities were carried out. Were, were carried out. Each Saturday, for, a, for example, the museum offered to the public a, pro, a program of propaganda movies of colonial ma matters. Moreover, for the museum surveillance, 20 Ascari were hired representing an additional reason to visit the museum. All these ele elements are not surprising after all. We can find them in quite old colonial museums uh, all around Europe. Mm, but what is the most striking is that is the museum life after the end of the World War II. So the main, uh, the main question is why to reopen the colonial museum? Um, after the end of fascist regime and the loss of colonial empire, what was the function of such a museum? The reason for this lay in the fact that Italy didn't go through uh, a real process of decolonization and rethinking of the colonial past in the post-war war. As some scholars have pointed out, at the end of, um, of the war, to build a new nation, the ruling classes uh, on, of the new Italian Republic needed to emphasize their own distance from the fascist regime without coming to terms with its legacy. And that's, at the same time, the new democratic republic wasn't able to cut, cut off effectively its ties with fascism. As a consequence, in the post-war public debate, colonialism was perceived as, as something concluded, a brave uh, interlude in the national history, and no process of elaboration on the colonial experience occurred. And this political background influenced uh, other sectors of the cultural academy. Um, and uh, until the latter part of the 20th century, Italy colonial past was a largely neglected topic in historical studies. Only in the 70s, for the first time, a new generation of historians began to study the Italian colonialism in order to deconstruct positive myth and perception, shedding a light on the violence, the use of chemical uh, weapons and detention camp, and so on. So, um, despite the fact that since the 70s, mass research has been carried out, in Italy, the narrative of colonial past lacked discursive unity and moral certainty, and the rawness of its legacy is still under negotiation, as some scholars have pointed out, talking about other countries. This appears clear when we turn our attention to the construction of, the memorial, of a memorial to one of the most cruel protagonists of Italian colonialism. Uh, in August uh, um, uh, 20, uh, uh, sorry, in August um, 2012, the Major Raffile, a town not far from Rome, from Rome, inaugurated a mausoleum dedica dedicated to the memory of fascist um, Rodolfo Graziani in a park of a town. Graziani played an important role in the expansion, in the expansion of Italian empire during the uh, 20th and uh, 30, first in Libya and then in Ethiopia. And the erection of the memorial to Graziani has been followed by critics, discussion and contestation, and has been denounced by part of the, uh, the civil society. And recently, the major was uh, charged with um, apology of fascism and sentences to prison. But in general, media attention, the violence of a massacre is committed by Graziani in the colony, 
colonies was rather marginal, and the discussion on mainstream newspaper revolves more around Graziani the fascist than on Graziani the colonial war cr criminal. In mid-September um, 2012, one month after its inauguration, a protest took place uh, over Graziani monument. A bunch of people wrote some comments on the wall, such as, the man you call hero is just a murder. One month af uh, after, another protest took place. Six, six cardboard appeared hanging from the Graziani Mausoleum. On the cardboard, were, there were lists of col colonial crimes committed by Graziani. So in this context, <laughs> to simplify, we have different interpretation of Graziani figures. A revisionist major that consider Graziani a great, great mili military leader, and uh, two anonymous protests that point a finger on the colonial crimes, and that seems to be a, a form of grassroots recontextualization that reframed the colonial legacy impersonated by Graziani. So that there is a constant negotiation around the nature of Italian colonialism, and uh, mm, it, 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 this topic uh, has, um, has, has emerged in different, ti different times in Italy. So let's have a look at some examples. Um, why are so many fascist monuments still standing in Italy? That was the title of an article uh, came out on the New Yorker uh, by Ruth Ben Ghiat. Um, she stated that Italians are co comfortable with living amid fascist symbols, that from her point of view are tangible reminders of the uncomfortable memory. Uh, one of the monuments uh, that Ben Ghiat described as a relic of aberrant fascist aggression is the Palazzo of Civiltà, built in our neighborhood in, in the 30s. And uh, she denounced the, the phrases engraved on the exterior of the Palazzo della Civiltà, a phrases from Mussolini's speech announcing the invasion of Ethiopia, in which she described Italians as people of poets, artists, heroes, saints, thinkers, scientists, and so on. Um, Many times a debate on the opportunity to destroy or maintain the symbol of the fascism and its monument has emerged. And many scholars have reflected on this topic, such as um, Nick Carter that used the, 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 the um, Luigi Montanarini monumental mural, the apotheosis of fascists, as a case studies to examine the management, meaning and memory of fascist start in the post-war and in contemporary Italy. Um, the story of, the, the, of this mural is common to other paintings of statue, statues creating during the fascist, uh, fascist era. Uh, they, were, they were first covered and then uncovered uh, in the, in, in, at the end of, uh, of the last century. Uh, nowadays, most of, it, of the cover of the fascist work of art have been removed, and this has led to a never-ending process of negotiation. Uh, what do the mural of, or, or the Palazzo della Civiltà represent today for the different political and cultural actors? How should we class classify them? Um, are they horrible relics of a period of violence to be destroyed? or historical document to be preserved. Uh, here there is a relevant example on this controversy that took place in Bolzano. This is a, an operational reframing of a monumental bas relief made in the 30s uh, that represents Mussolini, il duce on horseback, surrounded by allegorical figures and descriptions, like the fascist motto, believe or buy and uh, fight. In two, uh, 2011, after decades of controversy um, over the preservation or destruction of the mon monument, a solution was finally reached. It was decided that most of the contested sign of the fascists or the 
province of Bolzano would include explanatory uh, intervention of its history. So it was announced the competition for ideas and the winner proposal was real, uh, re re realized and inaugurated two weeks ago. The intervention includes a quote by Hannah Arendt that can be read on the, um, that is uh, the, this one, uh, no one has the right to obey. And as we can uh, read on the website of the project, the intervention seeks to historically contextualize the work and um, super in, it superimposes new elements capable of counterbalancing the ideological contest. This case, uh, this case history open up a key question, how to transform a contested heritage in a place of memory. So going back to the collection of colonial museums, some urgent questions have emerged related to the tangible evidence of the colonial legacy. How can we reconstruct the uncomfortable memory represented by the colonial museum collection that are strictly linked to the Italian fascist regime and to the colonial oppression and domination. My first reflection concerned the necessity to embrace an historical perspective in order to highlight historical processes that were at the heart of the Italian colonialism and gave rise to the colonial museum. Thus, uh, one of the first aims would be to create a critical framework based on, uh, on the archival documents to show the ideological narratives incorporated in, the, in this history of the museum and the object that are part of it. This historical framework has to be accompanied by ethnographic perspective to make it possible the emergence of different voices and interpretation, historical documentation, oral history, and ethnographic research on contemporary perception on colonialism will be the base of, um, of, um, for a work of reframing of collection. Um, these methodologies are power, powerful way to inquiry into memory lapses to start a process of cultural elaboration of the past, to go further the institutional discourses, questioning the form of self-representation and underlying the frictions between normative levels and individual strategies. This historical perspective will be help also to merge and show other corpus of documents related to the Colonial Museum, now disseminated in the city of Rome in different institutions. For example, books and photographs at the National Library of Rome, historical archive at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Many scholars have stressed the difficulty of assessing the archives and documents related to the Italian history. Um, so the simple act of displaying an item, uh, a, a document, an object, um, acquire a, a strong symbolical meaning. So um, I'm going to conclude. Uh, the, there were a lot of <laughs> things to say, but sorry. Uh, but the, um, so the, the, in my opinion, uh, Pigorini Museum must accept the challenge uh, of uh, uh, reactivating the multiple meanings of this object and, and reconstructed their problematic biography. And in doing so, uh, the challenge is, uh, is to turn colonial museum in a meta-museum of the colonial legacy by creating new narratives of, of the object and at the same time discuss part and present exhibition practices as part of this exhibition. Thank you.